It's still June. What the heck? Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Dead Air Live out here on the Dead Air Full Spectrum channel. We are simulcast with KGRADB.com, KGRA on YouTube and on Facebook, and it is our Sunday show. So welcome, everybody, joining us inside the chat. I want to thank you guys. Uh, we are going to have two hours of wonderful discussion within the paranormal uh, topics and discussions with a very special guest going to be joining us here in just a few minutes, Jay Marie Yates. Uh, my name is George Lopez. With me, as always, Mr. Ken DeCosta. Always a reminder, guys, right off the top is to hit that uh, the, the subscribe button. Also, don't forget the reminder bell and the thumbs up. Give us some likes. Smash that. Uh, Do it all. Or, it's, it's so important for us. Uh, I'm a little out of sorts tonight. It's been really, really weird. I don't know why. I've been feeling a little uh, under the weather, but... Uh, uh, we will uh, persevere and continue to go on. Mr. DeCosta, how are you tonight, sir? As we do. The operative word here in New England is hot. This just in. It's very warm. Reached 87 degrees today, so I lived the life of a Floridian today. Stayed inside with the AC going. Watched the finals of the Travelers Championship Golf Tournament, which I was... Fortunate enough to attend in Cromwell, Connecticut, Thursday at the good graces wow. of Erin Bush and her husband, Justin. Erin nice. being the assistant for Andrea Perrin. And uh, her husband works for the PGA. So we felt like big wigs with the lanyard passes and everything. And people looking at us like, they've got lanyards. They've got to be somebody. So we had an absolute ball. It is the first professional golf tournament that uh, <coughs> I've ever attended. And being a golfer in myself, I just feel so inadequate right now watching these guys play. <laughs> yeah, is any superstars that we would know by name? Oh, yeah. Uh, Rory McIlroy was out there. I don't uh, know him. Xander Scheffler. No, I don't know who that is. Who, no, who that is. No, um, Scotty Scheffler, the number one player in the world. I have no idea. And no. Um, Ted Ted Williams was there. You know Ted. You know you know Ted Williams, right? That's the guy who got his head cut off, right? And they're going to shoot that into space. Yeah, he shot a terrible round. I was figuring that. Yeah, but uh, I'm glad you had some recreational time. You actually, I saw you posted some pictures on social media too. You're out mm. on the water, uh, just trying to uh, take in. I think it's, you have a total of. Uh, Five weeks and then it snows again. Is that right? Yeah, Island? something like that. It's, it's, it, you know, in somewhere in seventy-two hours, it could, you know, just all go south. As soon as that big iceberg cracks off, we got problems here. You know, we'll be the first to know. We're like the alarm that'll go off when we're submerged. Run! I was fascinated. You know, I I, I love uh, all kinds of different programming, and reality shows are also. You know, something that I can give or take, it depends. But in this particular case, I've always enjoyed watching all the shows with Gordon Ramsay. Um, you know, Hell's Kitchen, Kitchen Nightmares. And uh, he had one short run, short lived show called Hotel Hell, where he would go in and help mm -hmm. uh, these people, you know, get their, their properties back uh, up and running correctly. And two different ones were up in your neck of the woods. One was in Rhode Island and the other one was in Connecticut. And as soon as they came up, the caretaker said, oh, and it's haunted. There's a little girl that's in this room or it's haunted. Oh. There's a woman who constantly, you know, climbs into bed with the men. And I'm like, All right, this this might be cool. As You know, I was just talking with you guys just before the show about looking towards getting the Winchester Mystery House uh, uh, tour people to uh, come on with us. But I looked up both of those places, and both of those places closed or changed ownership in that very short period of time, I'd say <laughs> 2016. 
Um, death. I like so, Gordon Ramsay's cooking shows. I hate when he fakes that he's mad at everybody. Oh yeah, but well, that's part of it. Like John Tapper, yeah. the same thing too. But right. uh, but is that a common occurrence up there? I know we could talk about that with. I don't know. The what did he visit house. a hot dog stand in Providence? I mean, restaurants these, in Rhode Island. I mean, these were historical locations. I mean these these were buildings yeah, built back in the 1700s, 1800s. We've got some amazing places. I could like spend an hour throwing names at you, but I'll have to catch up, see if I can find the episode. Um, yeah. And it's probably a good bet. It might be a place that. Uh, Myself and Rise Up Paranormal have visited, so we kind of had a run on historical restaurants here in Rhode Island a little while ago, but the little girl ghost does ring a bell. I'm wondering if, uh, well, like I say, I'm not going to throw a million names out there, but the Carriage Inn immediately comes to mind, and we were there just three months ago, so yeah. I'll check it out. No, this, uh, the, the one I think uh, was, I, I want to say this one was a Connecticut one. Um it did have a name similar to that, but now it's the 1725 Inn or something like that. So it's based mm. upon its year. Um, and I looked up the website and there's nothing mentioned about the paranormal whatsoever. And I guess that can happen. Uh, again, you know, we, we've we just seen changes recently with the Lizzie Borden house, changes with the Conjuring house. Yeah. And, you know, that just continues to, that that rolls down the hill all the time. There's always going to be new ownership, people that are coming and going. But um, you know, when they stop, I think it's fine. It's interesting. I find it that you know the ghosts are gone now because the prior owners left. You know, or they're just I don't not going to work to advertise it. I don't think yeah. it works that way. It just seems funny that it's no well, longer. Well, I the do want to mention for everyone in the New England area or anyone who's planning on a vacation. That on July 7th, uh, I and some members of my group, Rise Up Paranormal, will be hosting a ghost hunt at the Conjuring House from 7 to midnight. So I think that more than more likely than not, I will we will probably be doing a series of those things going forward through the year. But we've been invited to participate in the events that are taking place there. So can't wait to go back. You see, you see that book behind me there? Everybody, everybody, look at that book. That book. You know, you know, F U. Oh, in a, uh, F L I. Oh, okay. In a flicker. In a flicker. I, oh, I wrote okay. a book with Andrea Perrin, and I still have not been to the Conjuring House. But we're 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 working on that right now, but aren't we? You Ken? digress. I know we will. Um, so let's move forward here. We've got our wonderful guests in the green room. Ken, if you'd like to do the introductions and uh, let's get our show started. Be more than happy to. We are happy to welcome them back. It's been a while since we've seen this, folks, and they are delightful. Jay and Marie Yates are more commonly known for their frequent appearance appearances on popular paranormal reality television shows, such as Ghost Adventures, Haunted Case Files, Seasons 1 and 2, Paranormal Witness, Ghost Adventures, Aftershocks, and Scariest Night of Our Life. Jay, being haunted since birth and undergoing a near-death experience, has created a lifetime of personal paranormal experiences. Marie, his wife inheriting these hauntings in marriage, has brought the Yates family haunting countless supernatural encounters in and outside the field of paranormal investigation. And we are going to talk to them about a wonderful event they put on every year and some of their experiences, husband and wife team. Marie and Jay Yates, welcome to Dead Air. Hi. Hello. Nice to be back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been a while between visits, but we're very, very happy to host you tonight. So I know there's a lot to we're crack into. To well, I'm noticing, Marie, you're having the same problem I'm having with this humidity. It's the hair thing. It's so frustrating, yes. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's always in a ponytail. I've noticed since we moved to Tennessee, I don't have my hair down anymore. <laughs> it's always in a ponytail because it's so yeah. humid. It just George is rocking the Dr. Evil look. Give him the Dr. <laughs> Evil look. It works. It seems to work. One but uh, thank dollars. you for joining uh, us tonight. Uh, I mean, really appreciate it. Welcome back. And, uh, you know, uh, you guys, uh, you know, are always, always welcome here on the Dead Air Family channel. That's oh, important. Well, we appreciate us. that. 
anytime. <laughs> so we have a uh, you know a bunch of different things that we want to go over topically, but as Ken was just bringing up too, is that you know you guys have done so much already and constantly on the go, and I you know for me one of the questions I would ask generally for the audience for our viewers out there is the the kickoff the beginning as Ken said. Jay, this all started with your experiences. How far back did they go, and how did that transform into being a paranormal investigator? Yeah, I mean, I don't really remember a time in my life uh, to where they weren't really happening, to be honest with you. Um, so the paranormal was very much so normal for me growing up, um, and that started, like, really young, like I said. I mean, I remember, you know, further back than even kindergarten where I would have uh, crazy experiences um, and uh, that kind of kept with me for my entire life. And then I met Marie here and <laughs> kind of screwed her whole life up and introduced her to, to the yeah. paranormal inadvertently, inadvertently. <laughs> um, but uh, as a kid, what that looked like was uh, a lot of restless nights um, and uh, being a, 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 pretty much withdrawn um, uh, in social settings. I was kind of like the outcast. You know, kids were reading uh, books like uh, Dr. Seuss and stuff and Where's Waldo? And here I am researching like Ed and Lorraine Warren and uh, what is a haunting and poltergeist and what all this stuff means. So um, I was kind of a different kid, I guess. Um, so uh, it, I never anticipated it going to the level it did. But I guess all in all, I, I got tired of uh, being hunted by ghosts and started hunting them myself. So um, and then Marie kind of became my partner in crime a little on down the road. So he told yeah. me I would be able to do history. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got her. Yeah. That well, that answers a question I had real quick. When you were a kid and all these things were happening, whether you felt targeted or not, but I think you just answered that. Yeah, it definitely. I mean, I I, did, I thought it was kind of normal. So at first, I thought everybody went through the same stuff that I was going through. You know, because you're a kid. My circle was kind of small already because of you know I was kind of like uh, I, I grew up uh, in a very interesting setting. Uh, my my parents weren't around all the time. Uh, father wasn't there, um, and uh, I was raised by my grandmother. So uh, I went through a lot, you know, growing up as a kid. Um, and uh, I just remember, like, you know, constantly trying to try to sleep at night. I went through a whole lot of those uh, double D batteries from those old school flashlights, you know. Um, started building fortresses and tents in my bed um, to try to, like, hopefully not see anything. And then that was kind of short lived. Um, and things just kind of progressed, like, from there to where. Uh, it kind of followed me um, all through school, all the way through high school. Uh, in fact, as a kid, I would actually get tested to see if I was actually crazy. And what the psychiatrist would say would be really? like, you know. Can I get that done again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would be uh, it would be like, you know, like he, he he's either got like uh, he really believes that, you know, he's, he's seeing these things. He's not lying. He's telling the truth. So he thinks he's seeing what he's seeing. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Maybe he is. So it was never that big of a huge hit for them to worry too much about it. And then I just, as I got older, I stopped talking about it much and much less. Um, and uh, it, it just, I tried to run from it as much as I could, um, but uh, it didn't work out so well. No. <laughs> we, we thought we ran from a lot of our problems when we came out here to Tennessee. But, uh, being one of, of those kids, I can't speak for Joe, but being one of those kids at a young age that was reading things about UFOs and stuff. Right. You know, I just was drawn to these type of things that, you know, were inexplicable. And uh, if you want to call them paranormal or whatever, but, you know, I was always drawn to that, too. Um, did you ever pinpoint the source of this? Was it the home you lived in? Was it the land the home was built on? You know, all the research we do to try to figure out the origin of these type of things. Did you ever come to a conclusion on that? Yeah. So uh, we moved around a lot. Okay. So I, I came to the conclusion that it wasn't the houses that were haunted. It was me. <laughs> so uh, I can't imagine that every house we went to had some kind of like, you know, intense haunting, but it seemed like I was a bit of a, a draw to that for whatever reason. And of course, as a young kid, I had no idea the reason why I look back at it now and I have my opinions, but um, it's just one of those things. Um, I think that we all as children are born into this earth with this childlike faith and this imagination. It gets corrupted with world's disappointments and tragedies and trials and tribulations. I was never told, Jay, this doesn't exist. Jay, you shouldn't be saying this. I always had a support, at least net, wasn't a huge net, 
but it was enough to listen to what I was saying um, mm -hmm. and, and not really kind of laughing about it and things like that. Um, right. But uh, with that being said, I think I just kind of held on to it. But I think we're all born into this earth with the gift of being able to see things, if you want to call it a gift or a curse or whatever. I've gone back and forth even as recently <laughs> uh, what I what I believe it is. But um, uh, I, I just think I had a good support network and they kept it going. Um, I don't regret it. You know, I've been able to help and bless a, a lot of people um, with That's my great. experiences. And, and I hope to continue to be able to do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah now, you know, and, and the thing is, is important about it. And I think that uh, you came from a good place on this. Oftentimes, children report things and we kind of push them aside. And one of the things I tell parents or just, you know, generally speaking, is that maybe it's the child's imagination. We know how that goes. But listen to your child, because if you put off some of the more remarkable things they say then later on in life they're going to be less prone to come to you and tell you other things that maybe they want to talk to you about so whether it's ghosts or whatever it is at a very young age you know listen to your children because later on in life you're going to wish that they trust you enough to tell you things Yes. By any any chance, Jay, were you visited by Bruce Willis when you were young? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Not that one. Just, Not that one. And and for those of our younger audience uh, who watches the show, keep in mind too when Jay's talking about research and Ken was talking about research, it wasn't Google. This was no, no. <laughs> encyclopedia. This was going out to the library. This was looking at bookstores and 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 doing the research with what again and it's a big difference now because at that point in time you were only privy to what was available to you locally yeah you know you, unless again unless you wrote letters and tried to get correspondence with some of these amazing uh groundbreaking investigators you have to go to what they've published out there and what was available to you so right. it, it takes a lot more time but it gives you more time to experience your own parts of the paranormal while you're going through this an interesting way to start <clears throat> excuse me with that that really and then, is, it? <laughs> tv and, digest, was it tv guide something like that oh yeah the reader's digest that was uh, a big one when i was a yes kid. Like, trying it, to it, find yeah. those. <laughs> some people will know what i'm yeah. saying others won't but my grandmother had an extensive collection and i would cut out the little articles about like hauntings and stuff i actually had a shoe box i wish i still had it um, of, and I had videotapes. Those are actual tapes, kids. <laughs> but uh, I would record like Halloween specials and Dateline, 2020s, Unsolved Mysteries, stuff like that. And, and for me, it was a way, because I didn't even have Facebook, social media, Twitter, things like that, to like, I'd be able to pop that in or I'll read those articles. You didn't even have a computer back then. That's, that's true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but and you would, and you, I would feel comfortable. I'd feel safe. I'd feel like, oh, wow, I'm not the only person. So that was a much different time. And we've come a long way over the years. Obviously, technology has definitely brought the paranormal world together and the community apart. I'm just yeah. kidding. Yeah. I was like, I, I know what you're talking about. I, but how do you think I feel? I had to read this stuff off the walls of caves. They were etched in there at my age. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I'm, o I'm only half kidding. But, uh, you know, I remember readers, they, they usually had some kind of supernatural story you know, right. once a month. So. And then you, Marie, was this the type of deal where you had an interest in this or you met Jay, you started dating him and like, so what do you do? And he says to you one day, oh, by the way, I've got I, this thing that I'm into. So how I, did was that... not, <laughs> I wasn't into the paranormal at all. Um, to be honest with you, I always make a joke about it. The only kind of ghost I ever knew of was Casper the Friendly Ghost on TV. Because to be honest, I was raised in a very Baptist um, home and my parents were really strict. So I didn't really get out that much on all that kind of stuff. So um, to be honest with you, that kind of stuff to me, I guess, growing up was not the eyes what I was supposed to look at or think about and stuff. It was um, evil. Yeah, it was evil, I yeah. guess. Um, but I mean, the reason we met is he's actually was my cousin's best friend. 
Um, and it just, I, to be honest with you, we argued like there was no tomorrow when we first met. We still do. I mean, we still do. Yes. I mean, that's just number one, but I mean, but I, I never thought the first time I met him, I would ever be dating, married to him now after tw almost 20 years now. Um, but it was let's go, let's go someplace dark and quiet. It's not what you had in mind, is it? No. <laughs> um, the whole spirit thing, it just started coming to be honest with you. It started cause I have an autistic son. Um, from a previous marriage. And to be honest with you, he's seen a lot of things. And to be honest with you, I always said, oh, it's just because he's autistic, all that kind of stuff. So I brushed it away. Well, when I started dating Jay, he started seeing the exact same thing my son was seeing. And I remember you talking about the kids. If you don't listen to your children and actually sort of be there with them, well, I wasn't. So guess what? My autistic son that was a mama's boy started turning into a Jay daddy <laughs> because he only quick. wanted to be with Jay. And I started getting jealous. I'm like, wait a second, what is this? But Jay talked to him and understood him and all that kind of stuff with the paranormal and all that stuff that he was seeing. So I just started learning and, you know, he started helping me what he was experiencing and stuff like that. So, so what really happened was is that, <laughs> so uh, yeah, Stephen, he, uh, we even did a show about it. We talked a little bit about it on Ghost Adventures a few times, but, uh, he would talk to a man named, uh, was it Snake? Yeah. And a kid named Nicholas. And we thought, imaginary friends. Well, so did my parents, right? Back in the day. So, um, obviously, I listened. And um, uh, a lot of things went down in that house. Um, and, and there actually was a Nicholas. And there was a guy by a street name of Snake um, that actually did die inside <laughs> that apartment. And we found out after you were turning in your keys and we were moving into our first house together. Um, so yeah. I'm sure that was probably like, wow, Jay's not crazy. <laughs> uh, or maybe he is. I don't know. Like, how, how do you do this research? So like, well, how did you know that? You know, I, I do remember him sitting me down and he like, he made it very beautiful. Like he had a campfire, um, had some chairs out there, some light music. Oh, you made it really pretty. And he was telling me all of the spirit experiences. So he had. And I sat there like, okay, is I mean, and the funny thing is, everybody, how did you believe him with all these stories? And I'm like, I don't, if you, till you meet Jay, I mean, you honestly can't understand what I'm saying. Like, you look at him in his face, and it's like one man. I've actually, I mean, there's very few, I, <laughs> me in my lifetime, that even told you the truth. And it just by looking at it, his eyes. And it was like, and everything. And he scared the crap out of me. I, I mean, I will honestly tell you, right. I have no idea why. I've, I walked down the aisle to him after this. Well, the reason why I said that date night up was is because I was about ready to propose to her. And uh, I felt like she kind of knew about it, but I kind of wanted her to understand that um, not only was I haunted in the past, I'm still haunted today and still a survivor from that. And it continues to go on. And I knew that in marriage, she would inherit these hauntings and that this would also potentially be something we would be dealing with as a family, which we later did. Um, but it was like full disclosure. I wanted to make sure. Well, the first night he was telling me about all the experiences, I will honestly tell you, I had my first paranormal experience. Um, I will tell you, it scared the living crap out of me, and I wouldn't talk about it for the longest time. Um, I remember he would try to tell me something he experienced or he hears or he sees. I'm like, don't even talk to me. Don't even talk to me. I don't want that in my house. And I just started like carrying around a Bible or something like that in my ho the house. But I mean, it took me a little bit. I mean, it was it was just, you know, it's some crazy stuff when you first start seeing. You don't honestly believe yourself until you see it, and then you constantly keep seeing so, it. So to give an example of what happened during that little meetup we had there, <laughs> um, we had a detached garage. It had like a, you know, man cave kind of deal. We had a refrigerator, freezer. The freezer actually flew open, and stuff yeah. started flying out of the freezer. Um, you got scared. You wanted to go check in on the kids that were in the house. Well, no, was... I didn't get real scared until it happened like three times. <laughs> like it kept happening and we kept making sure that the, like the rubbery stuff on the freezer was not like loose or something, but it was holding on there really good. So I'm like, there's no reason it should be flying open and the meat, not just falling out. It it's was like thrown out. out. And so when it did it like three times, I'm like, okay, I had enough. I'm going to go and see my kids. I'm going to check on the kids. And I, I think I'm done now. And, <laughs> and then when I went to go towards the house, I seen this creature that till this day, I, you know, a, a lot of people don't believe in it. Like, oh, you probably seen this. You live in the desert and everything. No, I'm going to let you know. 
I lived there in Arizona for 20 years now. I mean, it ain't no creatures that we have there. <laughs> what I've seen. I mean, it was something unexplained. Um, I always say it's one of those, uh, what did I you kind of describe it as like a gargoyle or something? Yeah. I mean, but it was full like dark green and it just, the eyes were so dark. I've never seen something so deep, dark black that almost if you kept looking at it, you were going to fall into his eyes and never come yeah. back out. Um, and I screamed a lot at the same time, lights were flashing on and off. Yeah, we had our front lawn lights that, uh, were like pulsating, like they were like breathing. It was really weird. And I, I remember that ominous feeling as I walked through that area where that happened and that, that heaviness. And those of you that have been on investigations, you guys, you know, when, when you enter into a place and this is that heaviness, that like, uh oh, like, what yeah, are we doing here? Almost that fine. spider web that kind of hits you as you're pushing through it, where something's like telling you maybe you should be careful with how much further you go. And as soon as we walked outside that gate to the front portion of the yard, the, the lights exploded yeah. um, and just blew up, like, blew up, blew up. But that was like one of your. That was my first, first experience. Like, legit, yeah, like... I mean, there's probably, I, he always makes fun of because um, I will talk about my childhood. Yeah, she hung out at the haunted barn in the haunted house in the <laughs> woods, didn't know it was... on the bridge that was haunted, by the train tracks that are haunted, in the park yeah. that's haunted. I tried to go wherever <laughs> my mom told me or my mom and dad told me not to go. I went. I was one of those. So children. I'm a product. <laughs> of yeah, you, were one of the, you were one of those kids. <laughs> I guess. I, you know, I, um, so when you came to this, I mean, obviously, when you're doing something like that, it's just the kids thing where you're tempting fate. They get a little thrill, a little yep. adrenaline rush. But now when you come into a relationship as no one who's ever, you know, really explored it, did you find that that was maybe an advantage? Because I understand since then you've seen a lot of things. And you've experienced a lot of things. So you've come to that conclusion that there's something more out there that still needs to be explained and to be examined. But when you came into it at first, did you find yourself kind of like that balance where I'm not saying you were a skeptic, but a little bit more objective about things because um, you hadn't had a personal experience yet. So maybe you were the like, the yin to the yang a little bit and just oh, sort of like you know looking for that rational explanation and until one doesn't exist i did do that i remember we uh jay took me to a couple places that um were haunted and he's and i was like he would say something and i'm like no it's that and i would totally debunk him on every single thing i try to well try to and i'm like yeah it's this and i always try to explain try to you know explain oh it's this and that and this and i did that for a while i really did but you've always been a good balance to all this stuff. i still I do that why we, i mean you still do this, this, this yeah I, we challenge we challenge each other yeah and i think we should all do that in the paranormal community and i don't think it should be looked upon or frowned upon as oh you're trying to disrespect me i mean like, I mean, realistically, we're trying to find truth, or we should be, right? So, I mean, if that leads you down to being wrong about something, I mean, shit, there's plenty of things that I thought were paranormal uh, and, like, photographic evidence or audio and things like that years ago that now I look at and laugh, you know? But, I mean, it's part of growing. It's all part of the experience, right? Yeah. Sure. There's nothing wrong with checking each other because, obviously, if someone invites you in their home, the best possible outcome is, especially if there's children involved, is that you find there's a normal explanation for it. Yeah, right. And then you can walk away saying you have nothing to fear, but there's nothing wrong with investigators checking each other too and saying, hey, listen, before we declare this, you know, let's think about A, B, and C. I mean, I think that's a, a really positive way to go. It kind of happened yeah, naturally. It happened like, naturally. I, I I check him throughout everything in his life. Don't worry. <laughs> There's no shortage of that in all areas. Yeah. And now, and now as there are a lot of couples that do it. I mean, um, out here, you know, on our channel, we have Cody and uh, Cody, um, Desbian, Tori Hawes, um, couples that are doing this right now. And there's a different kind of dynamic involved in that because I think couples tend to look out for each other. They don't yeah. put each other in harm's <laughs> way. And it's, it's great to have a team that has each other's back, but when we're talking about someone who really cares for you on a personal level, that's sort of like a different 
type of thing than just, you know, I'm looking out for you. I mean, you're really looking out for them. And one of the things I wanted to ask you or talk to you about, because I've seen a great deal of video of your investigations, clips of your investigations, um, things on TV. I'm not talking about the reenactments, but when you literally have real clips of you doing this interspersed. And I know that there have been times where it gets pretty hairy out there. And you're not afraid to say, we need to take a break. We need to walk away. You know, now you may turn around and come back. TV may portray it like you ran screaming out of the building. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to show that you just took a breath. And then 20 minutes later, you say, hey, let's 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 push through this. But I like the idea that you're caring about each other enough that it's not, you know, you're not setting yourself up as bait for something, but you know, you're trying to do it in a reasonable sense. We well, really tried. Yeah. We were very reckless. Uh, we were. He used early. to bait me, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, he did we, used to we, bait we, me. That's what everybody thinks. It's, I mean, he used to. I remember there's a TV show that came out called Ghost Bait. Yeah, that's not what we did. No, we didn't do that. <laughs> oh, dear but, me. Um, I remember no. that. Oh, uh, my God. We we don't we don't even talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a funny no, but, how it came out. We, we, I mean, and it's just like, you just like, uh, we'd use you as a trigger. Let's yeah. just put it that way. We'd, we would use you as a trigger. But, I mean, ultimately, like, for us, like, uh, investigating residential homes, it's always become very personal. We don't just take any case, and it's not about anything other than the fact that we need to make sure we're in a good place mentally um, to be able to take on a case because we see it through to the end. So um, we're very careful about who we do pick to investigate specifically residential. Um, we try to be very safe with everything, um, but we become very passionate about that. And oftentimes for Marie and I, we've literally assumed their hauntings, meaning that like essentially like we've had things travel with us back home too often. Yeah. Um, and we would intentionally sometimes do that earlier on to see what we could do to help them out further. But that really played hell. I think at the beginning, when we started doing the investigations, I will say, I think Jay sort of went hard, really hard. And to be honest with you, I was more softer. And I think the spirits knew that. Yeah. So, and they knew that I was his one week. Like, because they couldn't scare him. They couldn't bother him. Oh, I get scared. But it's like, a stupid shit. It was got, stupid uh, stuff. Like, yeah, or a spider or something like that would scare him. But, like, it was, like, nothing like that. So they always came at me. Um, so a lot of times I did. Everybody's like, why did you always get it? I think a lot of it had to do with him pushing the level, you know, just a little too much. Because you don't do it no more yeah. like that. I, yeah, I used to be very aggressive in my approach to investigation. And there's a time and place for that. Um, but I think I was a little too assertive with my approach earlier on. I look back at that now. Here, I've been doing this, Scott, forever, it feels like. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm definitely a much different investigator. But, you know, speaking of you getting, like, scratch marks or bruises, and then we've seen all these shows... Yeah. And it sounds like, oh, every time we go on investigation, it happens. Yeah. No, like they want, oh, everybody that, thinks they want that 10%. Yeah. So we give them all the 10% we have and then they put it on a show. But um, it, we, we really think that, like we've talked about this a lot, is that these scratch marks might be an attempt at communication. It's not that they're trying to hurt you no. or they're trying to do anything to damage you. And yeah, it might be scary when it's happening to us or you specifically at that moment. But I would say maybe I'm allergic to the spirit. I mean, you know, everybody, some people like Jay's allergic to lavender. Hey, maybe I'm allergic to spirit. No. You know, I, I, it goes, I mean, it's, I, why do you say that? Cause it, one, cause it, why do you say that? Cause at one point, like it took a while for something to happen to you. Is that what you mean? No, I mean, like with you, as far as you're, it, you're getting scratched or bur I, every time. Oh, you know, oh, 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 well, you sounds I like you're the opposite of allergic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, every time you've ever seen us probably on TV, there's at least been one episode <laughs> where Marie's been jacked up by something, you know, and it's like, yeah. that's a false perception, I guess, of really what it's like out there. Yeah. But I think a lot of times that 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 touch, it's just a touch. You're not really trying to do that to you. Well, that's just... another thing. I think after so many years, I mean, it's been over 20 years for me now, almost in the paranormal field. Yeah. Like, I mean, and it's longer for him. I mean, I think you learn and, you know, you just keep growing. And I, I, we still have a lot to grow and learn. Right. I think every paranormal investigator, I think you never stop learning. And that's, I think, makes you a better investigator if you just keep learning. Um, but I will honestly say, I think... When we do it, 
you know, spirit life is when you're saying, hey, are you there with me? You could touch me or, you know, turn off one of the lights or the equipment or something mm -hmm. like that. Make yourself known. And then all of a sudden they're not doing anything. Well, I go to walk away and then all of a sudden I get a mark on the back of my back. So, I mean, you know. So people, like, hey, wait, hey, wait, wait a second. Wait. I am here. It just took me a second to actually yeah, speak some, to you and stuff. We, can, so, we, we sometimes misinterpret things like I that as something people. malevolent or aggressive. Yes. But if you think about it, it's just kind of like, okay, a book came flying at me. That's automatically bad. Right. And I'm always like, let's wait a second before we pass judgment on that. Because, you know, if I could manipulate objects, I may throw a book at you <laughs> yeah. to get your attention. It's just kind of like, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, then we get your attention. I'm it, just I mean, that's what's happened to us for the longest time. And to be honest with you, when we sort of, Jade sort of chilled a lot, he's like a, I call him now. He's chilled when he investigates. He's not like that. I don't know. You just went at it at the beginning when we first started doing this. I, well, I remember Jay sharing that with us. Yeah. The last time we spoke to you folks, he was talking about, you know, his evolution as an investigator. Yeah. Right. How much do you think being parents yourself kind of help your evolution along because with kids you know how it is you learn infinite patience <laughs> um, you know you're always being tested one way or the other because that's what kids do especially when you're in a situation where you're in a family dynamic you go to someone's home something's going on they have children's immediately it's like this is important we identify with this right. do you think that that kind of helps in that evolution to be maybe a little more patient with spirits or to understand that the last thing we want to do going into this place is take an aggressive posture. Right. Because maybe we can, depending on what we're dealing with, maybe we can reason with something. Absolutely. And Absolutely. we can reach a resolution. That's, that's really, oh, it's a really good thing. I will. Uh, well, our kids have showed us. Oh, goodness. <laughs> they're still doing that. Right? Yeah, they're still doing that. We still have one at home. Um, he's uh, should be moving out, but he's not. Yet. <laughs> he's, he's, he's my. They'll baby, be back. So. <laughs> um, but I mean, I think the pay, especially with Jay. I think. I mean. I mean, this is this is really what I've come in my evolution <laughs> is that like, uh, I really truly believe that ghosts are people too. And in life, you have good people and you have bad people. And, and on the spirit side of things, you have the same situation. So, I mean, if you're sitting there screaming at a person in life, you're probably going to get a certain kind of reaction. If you're being aggressive or overly assertive with a person in life, you're going to have a certain reaction. It's the same way on the other side. So I've just kind of learned myself personally to communicate with both the living and the dead, I guess. Yeah. And, and to do that in a more respectful manner and being a parent i mean to me we were sort of blessed we have uh, two children with disabilities um one my autistic son he's our oldest and then our uh, youngest actually had brain cancer so core of his brain is gone so he has a learning disability um so i think patience has been a virtue like through all life i mean especially high school oh my god i don't know how we made it through with these kids um but i i, I when high school came i thought you know, oh, being easier. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be easier. No, no. Okay, not with the boys. I mean, I didn't have a girl, so I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of times we say everybody brings different techniques and different approaches. Everybody works with a different approach. To me, I don't think it's because you know I use this piece of equipment and you use this piece of equipment. I think that we're bringing our own character and personalities into these investigations and that to me is more of we have different ways of doing things because i know if i'm with some knucklehead who's yeah push me down you know you have to attack me it's just a <laughs> dude you know you know um before i bring george back in here i while we're talking about that kind of dynamic with going into residence because it's a whole different ball game yes this is why we offer confidentiality because especially when we're parents, we, and Jay, you know what I'm talking about. The last thing we want is a child living in a home, not to have sleepovers because he is living in the haunted house on the street and he's ostracized in school and friends don't come over. 
and parents, you know, kind of project their own feelings and, you know, you find yourself very isolated. But a lot of times these stories don't have happy endings. A lot of times they go unresolved. Have you got one in particular? And I'm certainly not going to ask you for details because that's none of anybody's business. But maybe a better way to put it is, well, if there is one in particular you can share with us generically, or have you encountered those type of things before where it's just extremely frustrating because maybe you have to keep going back and it's just, it's unresolved or maybe you have to turn it over to someone else or maybe there's some kind of psychological issue there that we can't, we're not equipped to deal with, but, you know, have you encountered those type of things? And there's maybe is there one in particular? It could be maybe still ongoing. Well, that would probably have to be um, one of our darker cases uh, that we took years ago. Um, it uh, involved three girls. Three teenage girls. Three teenage girls um, in a house that um, a lot of um, occult practices had occurred in the uh, actual basement. Uh, area which was like the family like hangout um and uh it it took a long time i mean this is talking like months and months still checking in with them years and years later um but uh yeah it it almost took um out my own family um it was pretty bad um so the short answer is yes uh there is one um and uh it's one that we probably will never forget. And it was one of the darker ones and the one percenters, I guess, as investigators would call it, um, that I even use the D word, I guess, um, where it was something that was inhuman. Uh, and it, it, it definitely latched on to us and our family. And um, we had some serious things happen in our home, which included uh, phantom blood spot, spots that would appear on the floor. Um, we'd go to clean it up and check to make sure nobody was injured. They would disappear. Uh, crucifixes flying off the wall, things getting thrown at us, uh, the sound of what sounded like bowling balls hitting our ceiling. Um, it was so loud. I remember one day leaving to go to the house because they didn't listen to the advice that we had given them about, I'm trying to be careful with this one, but we, they didn't follow through with what we told them to do when we left after we had brought in our clergy and they kind of brought that stuff back in the home as soon as we left to clear it. And uh, I had to go back. And uh, Marie ended up uh, very ill out of nowhere when we were going back for that second visit to redo everything that we had already uh, done that they kind of made some mistakes with, I guess, in keeping it clear. And uh, Marie actually uh, lost consciousness in our bedroom. And uh, she lunged straight into my face as I was... Uh, about ready to finish packing up and I thought everything was okay. And I immediately started praying over her. And I remember I said the word Jesus and her voice changed to something diabolical. Her eyes changed, her teeth, her face structure, and just lunged straight from my face like, God, you know, just loud, just deep guttural. I'll never forget it for the rest of my freaking life. And I had just got off the phone with our clergy and he had told me, you know how to do the blessings. Um, you have, you have all the tools there. Um, I left you the water, use this. And we'd always joke Marie and I about it being magic water, you know, and, and we give him, you know, shit about it just because he was a good friend of ours. Right, right. Um, but, uh, I didn't know what to do cause she was tripping out and, and it wasn't her. And I remember I dumped the whole bottle <laughs> of holy water on her head and, uh, she just fell out and, uh, she came to really pissed off because she was wet. And My wanted- hair was wet. And wanted to know what had That's happened. That's on that. I yeah, don't recall any so, of Needless to say, I still went to that case that night. Um, I had Maurice stay home. And that was the one time, the first time that had ever happened, where I said, I'm going there. I'm going to confront this thing head on. And and it, it became a little too personal for me. And uh, lo and behold, we went there and nothing happened at all because it was in our damn house. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. And, and that was a fight Shit. back and forth. And this went on for, it felt like forever. But the, the positive story at the end of this is that uh, the story is that the husband and wife, they were having some difficulties. They ended up rekindling what was lost. Uh, 
the uh, the husband found uh, strength in faith, and so did the family. <coughs> Also that was affected was the father-in-law, which is the wife's father, yeah. used to be a pastor, and he, he went back to doing that. And he actually opened up a church in their basement where all this actually started. And the last wow. I had heard, the congregation had grown over, what, like 40 people, I think, yeah. the last time we had talked to them. I will say that case has actually taught me a lot about actually when you go into a residential homes. Oh. Um, I think a lot of people that get into the paranormal field, they watch the TV shows, and yes, Jay and I are on them and everything. They're cool, yeah. But uh, going into a personal person's home, it, it's way different than what this TV is showing you. I mean, you can really hurt these families, or they can hurt you and your family. Um, so, I mean, I think we learned, like, that was one of our biggest lessons in life. I learned it doesn't just take somebody playing with a Ouija board to cause a spirit to come on. I mean, mm -hmm. it, you know, three teenagers going through pu puberty, um, a husband that was stepping out on his wife, um, one doing drugs in the house. And, you know, all this different stuff brings these bad, you know, stuff. Yeah, there was already and internal. Causes, yeah. So yeah, there's internal like, turmoil in the house already. Yeah, so all that, and then we learned all that kind of stuff. Before this, to be honest, I never thought about that kind it, of it stuff actually affected all that kind of it stuff. It taught me that spirits aren't just like people's names. I think there's the spirit of depression. I think that there's the spirit of addiction, uh, the spirit of adultery, uh, the spirit of hate, envy, jealousy. I think those things are all very much so real. Um, some people might call them diabolical. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence and how I feel about that, but I, it's just an energy regardless. Mm -hmm. And when you start opening up your, you know, your castle to these, these different things and leaving doors unlocked, uh, it just, if you already have a pre-existing haunting, it's just going to add to that, make it worse. And this was a perfect storm, this particular yeah. case, which there was already a bad uh, occult history in the home. And then it was easy for it to come into our home because we had an autistic son that was having a very, very hard time. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't doing too good at that time as well. That's actually, there's a documentary yeah. somewhere about that. I don't know if you can find it. It's called Trials and Tribulations of the Demonic. It's poorly shot <laughs> um, <world> compared <laughs> to like where it should have been. Um, but it followed us through that journey. And uh, But it's very real. So if you wanted something very real and organic mm -hmm. about what was going on, there's an interview that takes place in that documentary. And I shouldn't say it's poorly shot. It's just not what you would typically see from us on TV. Yeah. It's, it's more raw much. is what I should say. Um, we did a great job. But literally, it's uh, it really shows what we went through. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Before George here, I'm just, I'm curious. I just have a follow-up to that. Whatever was going on in that house prior to you arriving, was it a residue of something that happened before or was it a self-inflicted wound? Like who was practice who was engaging in occult practices at that particular house? Was it left over before them, or was or were they actually? It's a little bit of everything because it was it was, it was the land. It, it, there was also people that lived in the house prior to that that were practicing stuff inside this basement. Yes, things were hidden inside the the flute of the chimney that were then removed by the teenage girls that currently live there. Uh -huh. um, that then started thinking it was really cool. And then they started practicing something that they didn't understand. Meanwhile, mom and dad are going through troubles and things are rocky. There's drugs involved and adultery and all kinds of stuff yeah. happening all at one time. So it was just like, and their home was actually built on native ruins. Yeah. Um, so, so I basically mean, a huge bullseye on this. The trifecta. Yeah. Yeah. They checked the every trifecta. box. It checked every box. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, George, please. That's incredible. And, and I found it very unique how you, spec how you kind of labeled those emotions as having a spirit, you know. And it's it's funny because how people always say, I'm fighting my demons. Yeah. And and it's sometimes it is self-manifested. And, and again, that, that does look like it was the perfect storm in this particular case, uh, you know, whether there is poltergeist activity because of the age factor of the girls, you know, and then it goes into, which I know there's only so much you can divulge when it becomes a, a residential case. It's very private, but whether or not there was physical, mental, or sexual abuse that was going on, could that have stirred up some of the pot also? There's so many different things that you can look at there and 
Uh, yeah, it is not an overnight scenario by no means. No, it was a long time. Yeah, and we had uh, we had a very special guest on uh, a while back, uh, a case of mine with Jen, and same situation. It could not be resolved, uh, but this is something that she had been dealing with for decades since she was a child, oh, and wow. uh, I continued to follow her. And she eventually left the state of Florida, moved to Texas. And was planning on moving back to Florida again sometime. And I hope we do get to see her again. But uh, those are tough ones. Those are definitely tough ones. Um, our very special guests tonight, Jay and Marie Yates. Uh, we're going to get to the topic on the uh, on the second hour of the of Vulture City Paracon 3 uh, that they host. And uh, uh, we answer some of your questions. But I want to get to two questions right now in the first, if you guys don't mind. This one. Sure. Coming from Ron in Minnesota, and his question is, do you think investigating a haunted location is kind of stirring the pot? Yeah, I mean, honestly, and that's why Marie and I these days uh, do a whole lot less investigating in residential cases and do a lot more consultation. So the investigation process to me doesn't even really matter anymore when it comes to residential cases, because the reality is, is if you have the smoking gun, the audio, the video and the photographic evidence, the first thing they're going to say, well, now what? Because they already know what's happening. So Marie and I are the now what? So we are the ones that are actually going to sit there, take the time to explain this to them and what's happening and really how to ride that line comfortably between both the living and the dead. Because sometimes we can't just get rid of it. We can't just kick it out. And sometimes we have to find that comfort level. We still continue to be haunted today, just as early as uh, what yesterday and that before, yes. like the day before, we had some crazy things happening in our own house. So we've just learned how to deal with it. And I think that when we talked earlier about self, you mentioned self-generated hauntings. That's something that's huge for us. And, and I think that we as humans have the ability to do amazing things with our mind. And that is also to create hauntings and to decrease the frequency of those hauntings at the same time if we know what we're doing. And a lot of these hauntings are really uh, fueled on fear, fear responses and our fear sensory. So if we can make someone comfortable with what's happening um, by sharing our own stories and, and things to eliminate that fear, um, naturally, oftentimes that uh, the activity in a home will naturally decrease um, itself. Um, but uh, I won't even usually meet them in their home at first because um, right. I've already talked to them. I know what's going on with their home. They already know what's going on in their home. Usually I'll say, hey, let's meet at Starbucks or let's go meet somewhere and just sit at a park, wherever. Um, it just They're more calm and relaxed to be able to sit there and relax. And I'm sitting and they're talking about it. And you can sort of see their pulse going faster and faster when they start talking about it. I said, well, you feel it? You know, you, that's when you start actually speaking to them and counseling them. Like, is it there with you right now? Is it? And, you know, it's. And putting it in perspective, yeah. because we, we immediately as humans, we're going to go to the worst thing. When we hear that banging in the middle of the night, we think demon and something's coming out of the pits of hell to kill us. But if you could really simplify it for people, break it down for them and really just talk to them about it. And really, OK, so we heard footsteps down the hallway. Well, can footsteps hurt you? No, but they can make me scared. Yes, they can make you scared, but being scared is a choice. And then when you really start, and that comes with my social work background and law enforcement and, and, and me you being just, mama. Just me <laughs> so. being a mama. I mean, you just have to calm them down. You're like, hey, yeah, you heard it, but guess what? Is it hurting you? I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some cases, yes, it is hurting them. So we take it in a totally different, that's what I'm saying. It's, I mean, yes, some cases, I will say on that question, some you do have to investigate. And I do think when but you we're go not conventional, yeah, even with that. No, we're not. I will honestly say if you do go in there and I always tell anybody if it's even a business or, you know, anything like that, we're coming in there. Yes, we it could actually. And I will tell you, probably 95 percent of the time it's going to amp it up. I mean, we're bringing all of our equipment in and we're doing this and they're starting to talk. So maybe even spirits that didn't talk before are now going to start talking. Um, and doing stuff. So yes, I, I, it, I mean, in most cases I've seen, it has caused a lot more stuff happening yeah. than not. All right. Let me follow that up with your response of, you know, we're, we're pretty much more so now the what now part of an investigation technology has changed the game within the paranormal. Whereas back in the day you had to get all this equipment acquired. <laughs> now it's all basically all on, one little device yep. yeah and so when you're getting those clients that are sending you their evidence video evidence photography audio evidence they're sending it to you um 
are you the jump in group? And I need about two minute response for this before we go to break. But are you the jump in group now? You know, here's your evidence, and here's our answer to that. Or is there still a a, a third party that's going to get in there and collect their own data to verify what it is that they've collected? Well, I think anyone, I mean, we get evidence all the time where people will ask us questions about it. I'm not the guy that's ever going to say that that's not your uncle Tommy or your grandmother that's in that picture. I'm not that guy um, because at the end of the day, no matter how much knowledge I have, I don't have enough knowledge to say without 100% certainty that it's not. Not to mention that people's psychiatrics, like in their mental state, is very important to us. So we have to be very cognizant of that when we answer those questions because if it brings them peace to make them feel like that's their mother and that dust particle that's floating across there, I'm not going to confirm nor deny it. I am just going to listen to what they have to say, and I'm going to find other ways that I could kind of help them out in that process of potentially grieving or moving on or however that may be. Yeah, no, it's an important part of what it is that you have to do. Uh, Number one is to validate them in one way, shape, or form, because that's the only way you're going to get cooperation with that client. Whereas if you are dismissive to them, they're just going to move on to somebody else that is going to validate them. And, and they're going to lose trust in you immediately because now yes. so, they feel violated or humiliated, you know. We usually it, tell them we are not 100% sure, but we do. Me and Jay will go through evidence, and we usually have, like, one or two other team members that will actually go through the We never, a, a lot of times, like myself, I have one team member that I go to. Jay has a team member that he goes to. So it's just like that person that we sort of, besides each other. Anything that we do catch out in the field, I I always like to send it out to people that aren't even involved with our team and be like, hey, what is this? What do you think this could be? And then set up what that scenario was when that evidence was captured. Um, Because realistically, I just want to know the truth. You know, like We have some amazing people in the paranormal field. And we've been very blessed to, I mean, have so many good friends. I mean, so, we, I mean, we're very lucky to have a lot to reach out to when we have, you know, like, hey, I want to ask your opinion. It's the same. You're so isolated now in Tennessee. It's just a terrible thing. It really is. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to head and take a break right now at the top of the hour here. And uh, when we come back on the other side, uh, we are going to continue our conversation with Jay Marie Yates. We've got some more questions in the chat. And uh, we will be back right after the break. You are watching Dead Air Live right here on the Dead Air Full Spectrum channel. Stay with us. Hey members, the new KGRA DB app is now available on iOS and Android devices. Gain on demand access to any KGRA DB programming. Download any show directly to your mobile device to listen or watch on the go. Go to the App Store and search KGRA DB. Scrolling all day, time can disappear. Wanna make it count? Why not volunteer? Posting pics of your food that takes up time. Time, you've got time to binge all of season nine, though it got so bad. Time, you got time. We're gonna grow back and be the same brows you had. Just a few hours to keep families from harm. Help us end home fires with Sound the Alarm. Volunteer for a day to install free smoke alarms in your community. Discover the Observation Deck, a one of a kind virtual event platform that takes video conferencing to the next level by using avatars to navigate a campus. There's so many areas and activities to choose from. There's a thousand seat auditorium, an expo hall, a nightclub, and even a beach. So come attend a conference, take a class, or hear a lecture on the incredible Observation Deck campus. Go to theobservationdk.com. You're listening to the KGRA Digital Broadcasting Network. We provide unparalleled coverage of trending news in the world of ufology, cryptozoology, and paranormal phenomenon. Whether you're watching our video live stream or listening to one of our audio programs, you are getting the best from world-renowned researchers and hosts, guiding you through topics the mainstream won't touch. Miss one of your favorite programs? No problem. 
Head over to the members area at KGRADB.com for access to our massive library of award-winning content. Make contact, stay connected, only at KGRADB.com. Everybody, welcome back to the show for our second hour with our very special guest, Jay and Marie Yates. And that's right, if you guys have not yet downloaded, download the KGRADP app. Uh, that's KGRADB app uh, in the Play Store. Uh, if you want a discount, use promo code Bill. Got a speeding ticket today. That'll work out well for you right there. Slow down, man. No future. Right? Gotta slow You're down, control, Bill. Bill. Unbelievable. We are. But, uh, go ahead, Ken. <laughs> No, um, I was going to say right now, you know, we're in the middle of a conversation. And as George mentioned, as we went to break, we will get to um, a handful of questions that we have in chat. And um, I just wanted to, again, commend our audience for being so wicked smart, as we like to say here in the Northeast. Uh, we have a smart audience who asks some really great questions you know when you ask better questions than we do it just it irritates me a little i admit <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're good they are definitely good we're going to continue with that too but let's bring our very special guest back onto the screen with us and thank you guys for joining us tonight again from your uh, isolated area of tennessee <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, you know and one of the reasons we love talking to you and um is because you approach this field and you approach what you do pragmatically. And a lot of people say they do. Yeah. They're objective and they're skeptical. But you guys walk the walk when you do these things. I mean, you're not out there. I, I just get this sense that, and this is kind of what I embrace, I'm not out to prove ghosts exist. Nope. It's really not what I feel is my calling. I think that we're out to assess a situation that may be a little unusual and reach a, a conclusion to some degree because we're not the final word on it, but we're just trying to walk people along and figure it out. So I really respect your approach and it's why we love to get your thoughts on this type of stuff. We appreciate that. It, it, you said that perfectly, to be honest with you. I totally agree with it. <laughs> and from a thoughts perspective, we've got a couple of thoughts in the form of questions again from our chat. We'll get to the next one here. And this is from Jackie. And Jackie wants to know, children pick up on spirits easy. How did Jay and Marie protect their children? Wow. <laughs> really hard one. Um. I will honestly say as mama bear, I mean, everybody, especially my kids, find me everything that says mama bear. Um, if anybody's, they know I'm the one, if like if they want me to go and kill somebody or hurt somebody, I'd be the one um, if they're hurting them. So I was the mama bear. Um, but the whole spirit thing, I will honestly tell you when it first. We've been very blessed. Yeah, we them. were very blessed. I will say, my youngest one, especially. Um, our aut my autistic, our autistic one, I will honestly say he, he, was already, he already had experiences and stuff. And he honestly was tortured with the paranormal. So as a mother, it was the hardest thing to experience. Imagine. And after I went through it for so many years, feeling like I couldn't help my kid. Oh, my goodness. What am I doing? I, you know, I right. need help. And we reached out to people. No one would help us. Mm. So we had to figure it out ourselves in a way back then. And, um. He, he's he's controlled it like, yeah he, I mean, he's definitely he's controlled it i mean he, like again he already had the gifts himself specifically that's our uh one with autism um but he's now like very in control of that so when he wants to he, see it's autistic but when he wants to he see can a switch spirit, it on and off, he can switch really. it on and off yeah. and so it's i mean it's amazing and to be honest with you that has he's to very do well aware that we talk about this yes. on a regular basis. and he so. loves it he loves <laughs> hearing like you talk about me on tv again or right he loves it um but I mean, I will say our middle, our oldest one, it was harder because I will say I learned a lot watching him being tortured 
And now yeah. I'm able to help a lot of parents and other children. Um, now, because I am one that went through it and I was able to not defeat it because we weren't able to defeat it. We just had to live along with it um, and actually live our best as we could. But like our kids, never, like Brandon, our, our youngest kid, who's probably on the chat, I'm sure he's watching, but he's in another room. Yeah, he's obsessed he, with he, it now. He's obsessed with the paranormal, so he's kind of got the bug. He is it. 21 now, so. Welcome to the show. All right. Yeah, so mom can't, I can't <laughs> stop. He was 14 years old, and we were at a public event uh, walking people around. No, he and, was 16, almost 16. Was he 16? Yeah, he was oh, okay. almost 16. So he, uh, mom didn't want him to investigate. Mom didn't want him no. around it, but he kept wanting to go around it. So. Uh, he would come out with us at some of these little events and things like that. And he would kind of hang out. And I remember one day collecting all of our, our gear and everyone had left. And I start hearing someone talking and asking questions. And it's my 16 year old son sitting in a corner of a basement <laughs> with a, an audio recorder. And I almost had a heart attack. Said that, oh my God, if your mom finds out you're doing this and I'm going <laughs> to get so much freaking trouble. Um, but from there, he, he's gone out on cases with us. It's very, now it's a little bit more. I still don't love it. I mean. It's, it's even rare now. Um, so, um, but he has gone out on a few different cases with us. Um, I can't yeah. stop him all the way. When we go to, like, we just moved here to Tennessee. I'm not familiar with everything here either. So he has been going out and doing stuff and yeah. he's starting to be more, I mean, he, he doesn't, he, I don't, I can't say he doesn't have abilities or not yet because I think he's just at that learning stage of everything. Um, but I will tell you one thing I did as a parent to protect him because I was so frightened what I see my other son go through. Um, I always tell people like, how do you keep them away from your children? I think I would say, what do you tell a total stranger that comes up to your kid and tries to touch your kid? You're going to stand in front of them and say, get the heck back. Well, that's what I did with the spirits. I mean, yeah. I stood at my son's He's doorway. Never had, yeah, he never, never had. had I stood by his door night. every night and said, "You are not allowed to enter this room. You are not allowed to mess with my child. You need to stay away from him." And I did that almost every night until he was like what, 17, 18 years old. I, yeah, so really did that. That was actually yeah, amazing. I mean, it was just amazing. something I just did. It was instead of. I mean, don't we did the prayer thing, but I just Quick. did it and I held my own. You know. Quick. Quick follow up to that, and I think that's a good approach. By the way, um, you know, empower yourself, take your space back, affirm yourself. Don't allow yourself to be a victim. Yep. So it's, it's easier said than done. I understand. Oh yeah. But um, I want to follow that up real quick before George gets to the next question. Really quickly, a couple of weeks ago, we had Patrick Burns on, who used to be the star of the show Haunting Evidence. Yep. And we got into the discussion, how young is too young? And because here's my thing. We talk about the dangers of the paranormal. We talk about it's serious business. It's not to be taken lightly. And let me just say that I'm not trying to parent anyone's kid. It's none of our business. You parent your own child. Quick disclaimer. But. More and more, we see younger and younger in kids going on these investigations. Yes. So there's kind of like a conflict. I have a conflict in my mind. If this is dangerous and to be taken seriously, and I understand kids are into the paranormal, it's on television, but how young is too young? Um, because parents will say, well, we only take them to the safe places. Well, who is the author? <laughs> Who is the arbiter of what is a safe place if we never know what's behind that door? Like, is this Casper the ghost, like when you grew up? Yeah. And I understand, <laughs> I understand that they're interested in the paranormal. And I don't I don't know if there's a magic number, if it's 16, 17, 21, <laughs> 55. But you know, when we're talking, I'm talking like minor, minor, minor children. So as parents, really, I don't want to belabor this because we're not we're not trying to raise a village isn't trying to raise a child here. But I just want to know what your feelings are on that thing. And, and, and to add what Ken's saying here, here's the thing that blows my mind about that whole argument is 99 percent of the cases that investigators go on. The people that are having these experiences were not seeking out spirits. It just happened to be existing in those locations. So 
even if you're as a, as a family are going on a road trip and you're staying at some local motel hotel, the encounter potential is still there. So I don't understand the difference other than the fact what? Because now they're asking questions directly to the spirit. Is there a difference between the two? I will honestly say as a mother, I will say all three of my children, because I even have an older son as well. Um, and he honestly hates the whole ghost thing. <laughs> he just now, I think he's, he's 28 now, and he's like got a girlfriend, a serious girlfriend. He's like, oh, yeah, maybe we'll go on one of these ghost hunts with you finally. And I'm like, okay. Well, so all three of them are completely different. Um, as a parent as me, I will say we do tours. We used to do um, the ghost tours in Vulture City, Ghost Town. Um, and I will tell you, they're his parents that have bring i think the we actually don't do it i think what is the age six <laughs> no it was like six or seven like no. nine or ten but... no it wasn't really yeah i it, it's six because we had some this is a bad pushback we used to say 12 and then we had some pushback uh, yeah, 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 yeah. um because it's a tour they're saying it's not a right. ghost hunt it's just a tour why can't we bring our younger kid they love ghost adventures I'm yeah like, but okay. what we would do with that is we would distract them with flashy shiny things and then we would right but we actually i will honestly tell you we give them the straight thing at the beginning we can't tell you right now that these spirits are gonna push down your kid or scratch your kid or do anything we they're friendly as you know friendly yes but like goes to people too and yeah some of them are good some of them i are mean so know. you that right. i will say I, I guess it's up to the parent i mean well, if you can trust your kid with a cell phone and that's hey, thank you to call anybody then yes. i mean you're kind of looking at it the same way because each or time the internet each time yeah. we communicate on the spirit end we're pretty much making a collect call to the other side and we don't know who's going to answer that phone so i mean that's the reality i mean there's there's predators out there both living and dead so i mean that's how i would interpret it you know um for me personally but we are obviously a little bit different in how oh we're out. totally different parent i'm more of the mama bear that's going to protect as much as i can all the way up right. until the age of 18 when they tell me i'm you know an adult now um but i mean I, I don't know i can tell that there's other children and i have seen there has been a lot younger yeah kids there has been children. a lot younger kids that and i will tell you these younger kids are even more braver and that's stronger than my children they're older so i mean it scares me a little bit that they are actually the that younger they are they're they, they're the fear they're, yeah they, 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 they've been desensitized by the tv show so now they're like like oh, they're right. really like the whole one is Zach Zach. makes it out each yeah. week so so zach <laughs> makes it through so why won't i make it through but i always let them remember when i do when i get a child around me i actually will tell them i'm like if you actually read about zach's real story he didn't really make it through he's had a lot of things happen to him so i mean so everybody's got a lot of help but that's community. a big one where the kids are definitely obsessed yeah. with ghost adventures you know mm -hmm. okay uh we do have some more questions in chat <clears throat> interesting stuff uh, let me get to rick hey rick, rick Wade. Hey, what's up buddy how can you remove an attachment if an entity follows you home that's a pretty commonly asked question. Um, I think with attachments, <laughs> I, I think that um, I think some of them you're, you're not going to get rid of, to be honest with you. I, I think that we can do as much hocus pocus as we want to dance around and do whatever we got to do. I mean, I think it really um, some of these things are latched onto us. And I think that maybe for reason, I feel like with my particular attachments, um, they're not going anywhere. I mean, they've been with me since I was a kid, I think that some of us just uh, are a little bit more gifted or understanding of what that is that is attached to us. Um, but uh, I don't think that uh, I'm not one of those like uh, good story ends, you know, where it's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, everything's going to be greater tomorrow and you're going to be able to go to this shaman and then you're going to walk out of it and feeling better. Is that possible? Absolutely. Can you go seek help from someone that's spiritual to help you to understand and recognize it? Yeah, absolutely. I've been to all those people and I still have attachments myself, but I think that it's uh it's it depends on what type of attachment you have too i guess right you know no, well so. we had an attachment it was actually our very first tv show that i don't actually recommend but i will say the actual story of it um we had an attachment it was one of uh investigations that we did at a cemetery and uh there was a child spirit of a child that followed us home Same and, with Andy. yeah and we actually i will say that we brought it back we 
like, hey, come follow us out the door, go into the car. You know, we brought it back to the. We kind of fast forward. Yeah. That. So, like, literally, Marie, <laughs> well, Marie, being, a lot of stuff. because it was a kid that had followed us home. And I think that it was just a random, innocent thing. And it just happened. And we, we were very aware that this kid was in our house. <laughs> and it made itself very well known. Marie talked to it like she would, like a human living, breathing flesh and skin. And uh, we identified where it came from. We knew where it had come from. And uh, Marie had just said, hey, honey, we're going to we're going to go back, you know, to this area. And uh, we'd like for you to come with us. You know, your mom's waiting for you. And we had this whole conversation. And like that worked for us in that particular case. Yeah. But I think every, every case, is, every is attachment's you know? going to be completely different. But we were able to cross that one. And I can't say... I've never crossed anything. Cross. Yeah, cross whatever you want to call that. <laughs> I don't. I don't say I cross spirits because, like, but that's. I'm not God. Yeah, I'm not God or anything like that. So, uh, and I know that, other people. I, there's so many of my friends that do different stuff, and I respect them and all their stuff. It's a uh, upcoming question, as a matter of fact, too. Uh, I want to break away from the questions for a second because I noticed Dark Zone is in the chat, and it should be uh, Jay Blumke and uh, Jay. I have been fighting with you for the longest time to get Keanu Reeves on our show. Uh, so I want to now give you justification why we should have Keanu Reeves on our show. Have you ever seen a ghost? Yes. You have? Yeah, when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. In Hawaii? No, it was in New York. Really? It was cool. What happened? Okay, quickly. Yeah. Okay, so I'm like a little kid. I'm probably like six, seven years old. Uh, in a new apartment, and uh, we just come from, where did we come from? We had come from probably Australia. Anyway, so uh, uh, Renata, uh, nanny, in the bedroom. She's sitting, my sister's asleep. She's sitting, uh, sitting over there. I'm, like, hanging out. There's a doorway. All of a sudden, we're looking over there, and this, like, jacket comes waving through the doorway. Like, just an empty, there's no head, there's no body, there's no legs. It's just there, and then it disappears. And I was a little kid, and I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. And then I looked over at the nanny, and she's like this. And I'm like, oh, wow, so that was real. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Cool. <laughs> I didn't. But is that a ghost, or is that just some weird floating jacket? That's a reason to move thing. to me. I don't know what it is, but... <laughs> Work on it, Jay. That Work was, on it. That was most heinous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's Jay's favorite actor. <laughs> yeah, it is, it, is it really? Yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we've been working on that for the longest time. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Blumke's over there on the West Coast. He's got all those connections out there. So, Jay, if you're still in the chat, get on it. Yeah, get his can. <laughs> He's Let's, an awesome um, guy. Jay's awesome. Yeah. He is. So, um, Sammy Yusuf. Him in chat has a very i think very interesting question how do you manage pk manifestations ideally through therapy now i'm going to make an assumption that she's talking about poltergeist activity yeah. where there's an agent you know a lot of times they're attributed to adolescent kids but not all the time not necessarily so i'm going to take a leap of faith that this is what Sarah's talking about. There's some kind of turmoil that maybe an adolescent or somebody's going through and they manifest themselves in psychokinetic activity. So thoughts on that? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, obviously I do believe that kids do manifest a lot of crazy things. I mean, uh, and I mean that like, you know, quite literally, like we've seen some amazing things that kiddos, like these little X-Men and stuff walking around, things that they could do. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, therapy, I mean, I, we always recommend therapy for anybody. Like, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not against it at all. In fact, um, when I worked social work, I would get these frequent calls, um, <laughs> like <laughs> an off-the-record phone call. I have to be careful with what I say here. But uh, they'd be like, okay, Jay, so we got the doctors here. Um, we got a question about a kiddo that... Uh, is you know seeing these things and things are moving and they think that he's doing it and they're really scared at nighttime because of this and that and they would ask my recommendations on how to handle that and i'd be like wait you guys are the therapists the doctors and you're calling me and asking me this but i know it's like we think that the kids actually seeing these things which was kind of a, a huge irony for me in my life growing up and, and then being in that position to be that guy to give advice and you know like with kiddos that are like scared of things that they uh, experience at nighttime, like we recommend certain things, like 
especially with young kids like water guns that uh, adding a little bit of lavender or uh, some type of uh, frankincense oil or something yep. that has a smell to it. Um, and then uh, explaining to them, you know, that there's power within this gun and spraying this water yeah, gun when there's, there's a certain and on a psychological level. Now yeah. they're reducing their fear response because now they have this magical water with this amazing scent in it. And every time it's sprayed, and it's cool because it's a water gun, and still. it's empowering <laughs> for them. The sure. same as we did with like oh, flashlights, things like that, different toys. That's the kind of stuff that we did in the field. But it's just funny that. I know with my autistic yeah. son watching him, like things would just like levitate and throw, move around, everything when he crazy had stuff, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff with him. Um, so, and a lot of it was him <laughs> doing it. Um, I remember I would have to sit with him and a lot of it was just holding him um, and explaining to him like, hey, let's calm down. Let's Reassurance. Breathe. Reassurance saying, hey, I love you. I'm here with you. I'm breathing with him. Empowerment. Um, tools yeah, of empowerment. it was just like, remember, you have control of your own mind, your own body right now. And that's what I sort of did with our son. Um, it, it, don't get me wrong. Did and it work this, this one is, time? No. It, 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 this it is a kiddo, a like our kid, just to give you an example. I don't know if I told this story before, but uh, you know, back in the old days, you had the tube TVs, right? So it had like a top to it. I remember one day I had told him to clean his room up. And then I'm like, Stephen, why haven't you cleaned up your room? Like, what's going on? Like, come on, clean up your room. And he and he, he got like frustrated. And I remember he just like balling his hands up like this. And I'm like, okay, now I made him upset. And I remember he had a coin on top of that TV, a big coin, like big metal. And I remember seeing that coin lift up just like that and then shoot straight across the room and land at my feet. And I remember going, oh my God, <laughs> like, you know? Um, pretty amazing stuff, though. I do believe in it, and I believe there's ways to control with that. You know, I mean, I mean it's, it takes a lot of patience. I will tell you, um, that's one thing I do help with, like a lot of uh, families um, with children, especially with autistic or you know, um, any kind of behaviors and stuff like that with children or young. Um, I help these parents with trying to teach them, you know, like sitting down, being patient with them, because sometimes these kids, they they're already in their they own just mind. Want to they're already to them. screaming at themselves in their own mind. Sure. So they need somebody to be more calm and relaxed and just right. be in there with them. So you know, you're more and less just walking right through the fire with them and holding them. You know, I think a lot of people may look at that when you're talking about the water gun and the lavender, like you're somehow deceiving that child when you're like giving them essentially a placebo right, to yeah. take care of this. But I think we need to understand it's a form of empowerment. We just talked about that. When we go into a place, don't allow yourself to be a victim. Empower yourself. Affirm yourself. Stand in the middle of the living room. Claim your... All those things. When we're talking about a child, maybe intellectually they're not developed enough to like stand in the middle of the living room and challenge something. And, and they the don't Lord's know what an affirmation right? is, but they know what a water gun is. Right. And I mean, and, and for religious families, like, you know, some might say... We'll teach them religious, like, you know, prayers and things like that. But, like, those are nothing without the faith behind it. So and if you can give a kid something age, physical, yeah. intangible, they can understand that their minds are yes. developed enough so, to understand I, I sort of have raised my children. I mean, I was raised in a Baptist home. I'm not a Baptist now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, believe in God. But, I mean, but my kids, I didn't force them to make, to be honest with you, at that young age, I try to teach them the right and wrong, what there is and out there. Um, they do know of God, Christmas, all that kind of stuff. I did all that, but they have their own choices. And at that age, they just don't understand that faith you well got, you enough. Got, you got to give them something. Yeah, you have to give them something could... else rather than just sometimes right. faith But I can see how some people look at that as deceiving, but I find it more as empowerment than it is anything at their developmental level. And that young of age, they don't. I see crystals and stuff, and I totally believe that crystals and all that kind of stuff works for so many people. It never has worked for me because I don't yeah, have, have, the have the faith in faith I don't have the faith it in it. Manifest. So it's like my faith is with God. So that's my faith. So it's like with that's a kid, you can give them a crystal in the room, but it might not work for them because they don't have that faith in that crystal. Mm -hmm. So I but mean, they there's, do in a water gun. Yeah, they do in a water gun. <laughs> Damn right. I, I, I want one of those. Um, I'm going to actually combine a couple of questions because they seem to go in the right direction. We talked a little bit about this. Um, and George mentioned that we had a question. Let's flesh it out a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, Sari Youssef, 
Do you perform any types of energy work in breaking the cycles that feed certain types of phenomena? And I want to combine that with Judy Regini. What are your thoughts on crossing over spirits? Some investigators don't actually believe in it. So let's tie this whole energy, metaphysical, crossing over thing, you know, working on spirits, getting rid of active. Let's combine those two things. Where do you come down on that? I mean, I, I'm not opposed to people in energy workers. I mean, we have plenty of friends and professionals in the field that are doing And I even use for myself. <laughs> so I'm not opposed to it. Um, I, I think that uh, it can be very beneficial to those that, again, have faith in that. Um, if a person lacks faith in it, then it's not really going to be helpful. Example, you can't go into a Muslim home and then use Christian provocation because that's probably not going to work. That's when you have to reach out to somebody else that we might be able to better identify that culture or that person's background. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it, it could work for some and not work for others. It depends on the kind of, and it falls back into that whole faith and what you believe in. Faith is a powerful thing. Um, and then, you know, when you become like an investigator and you have those real experiences or you've grown up with it, like your faith is seeing, like, I mean, you, you know it because you've seen it, seeing is believing, right? So um, I think it really just boils down to an individual person. Um, it may work for some, may not work for others. Like I wouldn't say going into a house using sage is going to work on every single case if you don't know what the purpose of sage is and the faith behind it and the understanding behind it. Mm -hmm. um, so as long as you're using someone that has intelligence and understanding of what it is that they're using or working with and the, and the recipient of that um, is on the same page, it could be very beneficial. I think um, what you're talking about essentially is intent. Yeah, it's absolutely. just like when people like Ouija boards, ah, stay, you know, Ouija board is cardboard, ink, plastic. Yeah, but it comes down to intent, and nobody tells you to take it to a cemetery and light candles around it. Yeah, and that's 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 made up stuff that <laughs> yeah. we do, you know. True. Uh, wanna let's pop one more in here. Uh, e R R T Ray, this is Ron in Minnesota. Does any attachment you have make you want to know more? or run away um i can actually say one run away um in actually yuma arizona um there there well it was an attachment because it, oh, okay. it was in, well i guess if you want to say attachment it's in the place it wasn't at home so the attachment was attachment. yeah well it was in there well you got that that the yuma what is that lutes casino yeah lutes casino yeah. i will honestly say that place made me want to run. I will honestly say um, that is one of the most scariest locations I've ever been to. I honestly, it took me somewhere that I honestly thought I would never get back to my family and my kids. I mean, my kids. And, and that place latched on to us for a while. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was just very hard. So I will honestly say I ran from it. Uh, don't get me wrong. Have Would I go back if somebody asked like, hey, let's do this and everything? Yeah, I would probably challenge myself. I'm just that kind of person. But to be honest with you, that is probably, that would be on my very last list of ever going back into that place. For me, like a personal attachment, for me, like I have personal attachments that I've had ever since I was a kid. Um, one specifically um, that surfaces, like when I'm going through hard trials and tribulations um, that uh, I've tried to run from it. You know what I mean? When I do see it, though, it always brings me back to that childlike fear is what I, I still battle with even to this day um, where I have to kind of like, okay, you know how to deal with this. You know, you know what you need to do, but sometimes your fight or flight, you know, sensory <laughs> kind of tells you otherwise. Um, but uh, sure. I've ran away from personal attachments, but they're attachments. So they follow you. Number one, uh, number two, um, like I said, there's some that I, I will never be able to probably get rid of. There's one that uh, we thought maybe kind of took a break from us and we moved out this way. Um, and we found out here recently that that's not so much the no. case. So, I mean, there's some I, I I'd say run to. I I've never really run into. Wait, wait, no. A good one is uh, Izzy from uh, Vulture City. Oh, that's true. She's a <coughs> funny story. Okay, I don't know if we talked about it on the show before, but Vulture City, beautiful place, middle of the desert, Arizona. Uh, we we had been investigating there and spent tons of time there. I mean, I can't even count probably hundreds, thousands. I don't know how many times we've investigated, been out there, whatever. Uh, I remember probably about three months into us being out there, we would continually get in contact with a little girl spirit by the name of Izzy. 
And, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty interesting. Like it was coming through our boxes we were getting audio. Like it was very interactive. It was really, it was fun. It was a good time. It was like really great communication. And I remember one evening we were at home at that time. We lived in a two story house in Arizona and, uh, Marie and I, uh, we're sitting down on the couch in the living room watching TV. She had started to fall asleep, and I kept hearing my cat crying to get into my you know, youngest kid's room, and he wouldn't listen. So I'm like, hey, you know, open the door, let the cat in. Of course, he didn't listen. So I walked halfway up the landing, and I heard the cat crying to get into the room, I thought. And I hear a little girl's voice saying, hi, pretty kitty. Hi, kitty, kitty, kitty. And I'm like, oh, my crazy. God. I don't have any little girls in my house. It was so crystal clear. I slowly walked back downstairs. Marie woke up and said, hey, you want to go upstairs and go to bed? And I'm like, no, I'm good. We can stay down here tonight. Screw it, you know? Well, the next morning, she's doing laundry. And uh, we're kind of just doing our errands around the house. And I was like, hey, this happened last night. And she looked at me so serious. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's Izzy. She follows us home all the time. She's from Fulcher. I was like, what do you think is a good time to tell me that the girl's nice. following us home? And then on another occasion, uh, I had seen her... Um, it was really crazy. It was almost like a projection. It was black and white uh, image of her. And she was walking up and down my stairs, just kind of playing with me. I stuff. will say we run. I can't wait to go back to Vulture just to communicate with Izzy. Yeah. Um, so that's so, one that we would run to. Yeah. And I feel broken having left Arizona, mm -hmm. coming to t uh, Tennessee and knowing what a relationship I had. In fact, the people that are out there running tours right now frequently check in with us and tell us, hey, Izzy's calling for you again. She wants to know when you're nice. coming back. So, and this is a little nine year old girl that really she calls me daddy. I remind her of her father. Um, and she's very interactive and a very loving girl. She's not, and we talk about crossing over and stuff. Like, she I mean, she's go. in her heaven. Yeah. Like, that is her paradise. Like, that is where she wants to be. And that's where she's the happiest at. And that's where she's returned in the afterlife. And she's taken a real liking to both Marie and I. And I miss her as, as a spirit. I truly feel that, yep. that heartbroken feeling. Um, there is uh, there's something that, uh, and I want to go off uh, direction for just a second because I would like you guys to hear a story from Ken uh, out with his team, Rise of Paranormal, and what you would call the speed of thought and how somebody from a very historic Colorado hotel just happened to appear out of nowhere. And I want to can to explain this to you i mean you guys are having experiences that are just they, they're mystical they're incredible uh but this might be a warming thought for you for future contact with her but ken go ahead well you know um we talked about uh cody and satori earlier and they have developed uh i'm not sure if you're aware of it but they've developed the ability to make physical contact with each other and through a series of knocks and raps can contact people on the other side astounding and they've got this thing where they run through the alphabet tap on a letter and these people literally literally will send three five seven word messages oh wow um this is i mean it's amazing um i'm not aware of anybody on this planet that can do this uh, we feel very honored to be able to watch this with them. But for a long story short, we were at the Colonial Inn, Concord, Massachusetts. Uh, they had a morgue and a hospital room there. And those are the haunted rooms everyone stays in. We're in room 27. So while they're doing their thing and getting these messages and we're writing them down, I'm on my phone. And I'm just trying to get information on the Colonial Inn. And I come to a website called Haunted Hotels of America. Okay. So I'm just trying to get some information, maybe on some background. And I can ask some questions. So I'm not paying attention. And I keep scrolling. And then they say, in room 217 is said to be haunted by head housekeeper Elizabeth Wilson. Now, we're in room 27. It says room two set all i see is the two and a seven so okay so all right let's ask about elizabeth wilson now i don't say anything though i'm on my phone away from them and i'm saying okay when we do another session i want to ask about this woman i say nothing suddenly there's tapping on the floor is this somebody new they they acknowledge yes somebody new 
And okay, A, B, C, D, and they're tapping on the letters. First word is Ken. Okay. Ken thinking of Elizabeth Wilson is what was spelled out with the taps. Now, I had not mentioned this woman's <clears throat> name. Wow. Okay. So it's like, and this is the second time my mind has been read <laughs> in <laughs> sessions we've done with literally, it. It's literally. happened before. It's like Ken thinking about me. And I was like, I'm like, I'm freaking out because I'm like, get out of my head. I got to watch what yeah. I'm, you know. So that's not the weirdest part of the story. The weirdest part of the story, inadvertently, when I was scrolling through this website and stories, I had passed the Colonial Inn. And I was now reading a paragraph about the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, the Shining Hotel. And it was room 217. Stephen King had an experience, wrote The Shining. Haunted by head housekeeper Elizabeth Wilson. It had nothing to do with this hotel in Massachusetts oh. that we were literally physically in at this point oh, because wow. I was reading about this woman who was worked in Colorado whose spirit <laughs> supposedly haunts this room. She comes through, taps out, Ken thinking of Elizabeth Wilson. I just okay. went with it. I thought it was awesome. And then after they were done, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> this is an entirely different part of the country. So opening <laughs> that pathway through thought or intentions we talked about before someone literally came through who lived 1500 miles physically from where we were at that particular time just to pop in set the record straight her message was well they say i haunt it but, <laughs> you know and then went, went upon her merry way bringing this up and 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 again the stories and experiences that uh, Ken has been having doing this particular methodology with Cody and Satori. Uh, some of the stories have been mind blowing, but I brought this to your attention to say, even in a circumstance where you are just speaking about this little girl, that there is a good chance in simple thought processes that they can travel at speed of thought. In other words, it's not really like you get in the plane as a, you know, a, a ghost gets in a ghost plane and takes a ghost trip. Right. Yeah. To Tennessee. To, no, they can do it instantly and appear to anyone at that's any that time. That's that whole time and place. space thing, right? I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, wow, that's really Again. cool. Man. Wow. So would you, well, would, you if you just learn. I would love to have that <laughs> communication with Izzy here in Tennessee. Wow, cool. I'll tell you what, if you want to, if you have an emotional investment in this little girl, yes. I can tell you based on experience your intention will yeah. invite her to visit you. However you decide, whether it's, you know, recorder, spirit, yeah. bot, I, you know, whatever technique or method, you know. Um, I'm, I know she's visited you know, me in my that dreams. You say that, though, because like we a, had gone on other investigations and we had thought that we had picked up Izzy's voice and we always wondered, wow, is she following us around? What would take any difference between a plane flight all the way out here? It wouldn't be any different. I've had her and I've had dreams. I woke wow, up and I told her, like, she'll have a conversation with me in a dream and it's like, amazing i'm like oh i just and i'll wake up crying it's almost like i left my daughter almost in vulture but you know it's like it's, i it, it is hard but i mean we know where she's at she is happy and everything but i would love to communicate with her a lot more yeah. i miss, miss it we speaking of definitely. arizona uh where we are on the time uh, which is rapidly running out but uh <laughs> we want to get into the topic of the event that you guys host out there in arizona why don't you tell everyone about that uh vulture city paracon is coming this year october 7th, 7th through, through the 9th. 9th yes um mm -hmm. so it's a series of events it's taken off it's done really well um we have tons of vendors uh this year uh, lots of good sponsors i'm really excited this year great support like uh paranormal teams came in and sponsored and i, I love that that's one thing i wanted to do in arizona is get a lot of the paranormal teams involved and be part of it and you know and everything like that um it's i mean i will tell you it's been rocky being in arizona for so many years the, every team is like oh i'm over here you stay over there we do that um i love to have them all together um and let's get you know because we all have different looks and outtakes of life in the paranormal 
So it's amazing to get to learn. I learn from every single one of them. I can tell you we haven't even talked about this yet, but this year during the meet and greet, and the meet and greet's been a huge thing here at the, at the conference that we've had over the past couple of years as it's grown. Um, and that is last year we had an opening ceremony by unearthing the supernatural uh, Navajo Native American uh, team yeah. um, that did something amazing for everybody on this last one. This year we have something a little bit different. We have uh, Patty Najiri. Uh, is actually going to be doing um, and uh, bringing people in on uh, table tipping during the meet and greet uh, there at Vulture City. No um, additional cost. No if you have a ticket cost. to a VIP ticket um, and you come to the VIP party, you get to watch um, and experience table tipping with uh, Patty. Um, so, it, it, and it's never happened actually at Vulture. I will tell you, the owners yeah. of Vulture. It's a hard, hard sell. A hard they sale. They are very, they're a little bit more open now with us and everything. I mean, She's our best friend, probably. But anyways, but um, it's just, you know, she's more into the experience now and knowing it's it's the intent of yeah. it, and that's what we sort of taught, you know, had her learn. Um, it's and we're not trying to bring anything bad there. It's you know, it's just an intent to. But we started out. We started out with the meet and greet on Friday night. Um, actually, no, actually, we start out. Actually, we start Friday early for a daytime ghost hunt and tour led by both Marie and myself and, and the know. owners of Vulture City. Um, and, you get a uh, tour, you get a go, like a tour of the town plus you get to investigate. I will honestly say as me an investigator, honestly, when it came at eight, nine o'clock, I'm gonna go to bed now. <laughs> I, I, I have a harder time staying up. So I will tell you, and as an paranormal investigator, you know that ghosts do not just Some come out at night. Stuff, um, ever so ever. yeah, during the day, at Volt is very haunted. So for those ones we that cannot make it. shut it down completely for a small amount of people to partake in that. Yeah. Those are about halfway sold out. We have then going into the meet and greet on Friday night. So uh, we have some special surprises for that evening as well. Saturday, all day vending, all day workshops and panel discussions. Patty will also be doing a gallery reading on both Saturday. A and seance, very first seance and yes. Um So, uh, and you get to see Andrea Perry. Uh, I mean, course, I yeah. mean, you were just talking about her, yes. George. I mean, she's amazing. I remember the first time I had known of Andrea and I've talked to her a couple times on like uh, Facebook or all that kind of stuff. Um, but I got awesome, to meet dude. her finally, and I remember walking by her and the energy. That you get off of her, I'm like Jay. You guys, I I told Jay to go meet well, her. We were at MassCon, yeah. Right? And then uh, Marie comes up to me. She's like, Jay, Jay, you get, you got, you got, you got to go over there. You just got to feel this lady's energy. And I'm like, You're crazy, Marie. They're tripping out. And she's like, No, no, you don't understand. And then oh, of course I do. Amazing. And I'm like, Oh my God, who is for this somebody person? that actually <laughs> experienced what she experienced in the Conjury now, it's like every year. Her whole life, she's great. Though. She's, yeah, she's who, amazing. So she's gonna be there. Oh, she's try it when when it's when it's Andrea and and all of her sisters, and Roger <laughs> and all of them together in one room. It, you're talking about an I amazing. I can that. Yeah, massive amount um, of energy. But uh, we we have uh, we have of course uh, with Tennessee Rat Chasers. They will be out there this um, year. So we're excited. They actually um, film with us. Um, a Demi Lovato's um, Unidentified. Yeah, Identified uh, show. So they were out at Vulture once, um, and we they just loved it, and they really wanted to be out there. So we have a, a, an investigation that Saturday night that includes all 16 buildings over the past two years, plus they've also brought how, back how, one of Jay, the buildings. How many, Jay? 16 buildings. Okay. Yeah, so 16 buildings across <laughs> multiple acres. So uh, even though we have a large size of people that turn out for this, uh, you could be like uh, completely smaller groups spread out, of course, of like how many acres in town? Oh, my gosh. It's like 15 acres? Something like it's that? 15. No, 22 acres. Is it 22 yeah, acres 22 in total? Acres. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I mean, uh, so we rotate that. It's a good time. We have all of our, uh, our headliners come out. Um, but we, we have a huge list of people coming out this year. Uh, the rates, I mean, Christina George, Paul Welch, I mean. Uh, Colin, Colin will be out there again. Colin, yes. Colin, uh, oh. from uh, Paranormal Files. Uh, we have, God dang, We man. have the Lynches. The Lynches We're actually trying, we try to bring it to where some people from the east to the south come out to the west. Um, we have Sam um, sure and James. Um, he's coming out from, yeah, yeah. yeah, from the east coast out there. So, I mean, we're excited to bring people and we try to. Um, bring newer people, I mean, new people all the time. And we don't, I don't know. I, I love some of our, uh, the paranormal, every paranormal, uh, convention is amazing. I will honestly say it's the best way. If you're really into the paranormal, and you want to learn, go to these conventions. Mm -hmm. There are so many in so many different States 
And go. We, we try and not to be just like top heavy celebrity no. status. We, we bring investigators in that are well respected around the United States and, and sharing in one interest. And, and that is in the paranormal and the love for that. And we always end up having really good reviews about it. Like it's, Debbie Branning. If you really want to know about, books. yeah, like she's written so many books. And plus, if you really want to know about hauntings of Arizona, that's, that's a lady you want to talk to. So, I mean, and then we have these paranormal teams, you know, my paranormal experience. Um, Natalie from Paraflex. I mean, we're trying to bring people Unearthing in. Unearthing the supernatural we back out again. Yeah, I mean, it's just we try to make it an all-around, like a big family gathering. Right. Um, and all of us learning from each other. No judging. I mean, because all of us have different methods. Every single one of us. It's really cool, like, how it's like kind of, like, evolved over the years. And it's really become just, like, people just actually, like, leaving this and going, like, oh, my God. Like, this was, like, a really good weekend. And yeah, we have, really we have people begging us to come back. And we're trying to do something different every year. <laughs> we try to, and everyone's like, oh, we want to come back. I want to come back. But, and it's not me being mean. It's just we really want to do. We want everybody to be able to experience. Like, I would love to get you guys out to Vulture. I mean, I want people to be able to experience Vulture City. I mean, it is the w most wonderful place. I, My family, we call it our Disneyland. That's what we do. So, well, George, you know, I mean, because the Conjuring House is, I mean, I'm here, you know. <laughs> so we're going to be, you know, working with the new owner. And George has never been to the Conjuring House. Well, George, take heart. I have never been to Vulture City. <laughs> well, that, actually, that's the funny part with regards to uh, to Ken, because he's covered the entire Northeast. Uh, but at least I've had the privilege to go to the Black Swan Inn in San Antonio. I've been able to go to the Stanley Hotel in the Stead's Park, Colorado. Uh, but uh, but yeah, Ken has blanketed the entire Northeastern region. So. I've never been to Spain, but I've been to Oklahoma. There you go. <laughs> so what it, what happens now? Now that you guys have relocated, are you looking at uh, you know Memphis Magical Paranormal Tour next next month next year, or what are you going to do? No, no, not at all. Um, I mean, we'll always have love for Vulture. It's like a part of our heart. We spent like a long time and many years just sitting out there in the town. It was one of those places like during pandemic when everything shut down. We were there almost every single day, like investigating and really experiencing we that didn't have thing. to worry about anybody sneezing on us or breathing on no, us we we already, we already social distance and then <laughs> when we talk about this you go to a lot of these ghost towns and then there's nothing against them they have to turn a profit and they have to stay open but our brothel the brothel out there is in a soap shop um you know the saloon isn't you know a, a working saloon we're not selling t-shirts and stuff outside well, of the uh you know they the, do the have a gift shirt. shop there is oh, a gift shop there, there, but it's not shop. inside the actual historical building no. so when you go out there um, a large percentage of the artifacts that are there are actually organic and time period from that actual spot. Um, there is still, uh, up till here recently, was an active gold mine next door, and it sounds like that. I don't know. If that's, that's just still... shut down, actually. Yeah, which would be interesting to see how that changes activity. Yes. Is it hype it up? I actually it... can't wait to get back to see it because yeah. we've never investigated it without it actually being an active gold mine over there. If you've seen uh, the Ghost Adventures episode, Disturbed in Wickenburg, uh, that the, that we did out there with uh, Zach and the team, uh, they we caught an amazing, they, they caught the, uh, what is it, uh, was it a flare that they caught, I think, of the, uh, the cowboy yeah, standing the outside of the brothel. Um, Ghost Bros have been out there. They, they caught some really great stuff. We've caught amazing stuff collectively with all these people. Um, but it's been, it's been a really cool spot. So there's like a brothel. We have a, a cookhouse. We have a workshop. A hanging tree. We have a, a, the hanging tree where a lot of the deaths occurred. We have a large assay building that you see on a lot of these shows. It's two stories uh, in height. The walls average around like four foot in depth. Um, there's, uh, geez, there's so many buildings now. They have the church house. They have. Um, they well, have, they're just now bringing over the, um, the pump, the, the, not the pump, but the generator generator building. Yes. Yeah, That's um, new this year. So if you were out there last year, you got to see the generator, but not the building. Now the building's been fully intact. Yes. It's not in the same location. It's brought down the hill a little. I love point. being at Vulture wow. because like I said at the beginning, when Jay and I got together, I'm a history buff. I love history. Um, one reason I love Tennessee. I mean, oh my God, I'm like in love with this location and I mean, all the history here. He, go, oh, sure. I'm driving him crazy. Yeah. Um, if you but, go to Vulture Mine, don't take any artifacts or you'll be cursed for life. 
Yes. You know what? It's funny you say that. People take things and they send them back in the mail claiming that yes. they have attachments and things. It's oh. happened like three times now. Someone's brought a rock. It was two times it was just a rock. And they're yeah. like, here, we're sending this rock back to you, you know. And I'm like, okay. And, and then you get to check out, uh, which is now rapidly growing. We have uh, Izzy's actually Paranormal Corner, actually, that we named it after her. Oh, cool. um, because we identified a lot of haunted artifacts there in the town that uh, seemingly have some kind of crazy energy. Um, which then escalated into people from all over the world and paranormal Bring teams toys. bringing toys for Izzy that are haunted. Um, so we didn't know where to put them. So we put them all in this corner um, in the uh, old superintendent's building. Um, but the place is massive. It's huge. If you have a chance to come out there, it's literally like a family reunion um, and, and really seeing old friends making new ones. We've seen paranormal teams form from this convention over the yeah. couple of years of being out there. Um, but just people coming out with like interest. It's just, it's a real homey feel. We try to make it that way um, and let you have some freedom while you're out there and enjoying the space. Investigate yeah. your way. I mean, we're not sitting here unless you're trying to put candles right. around and conjuring the devil. I mean, then may, maybe not. And of course, for our ghost <laughs> hunt there, we take down all the wire mesh. So you're able to go to all the areas that you're not allowed to typically when you come out to Vulture City for a day tour. Yeah. Road trip, I'm sold. <laughs> See, we'll have to talk we'll have to talk about you guys come into the next year our next year 2023 will actually be on friday the th it'll be on a friday the 13th oh god what what could it what, what could and happen just imagine <laughs> what kind of guests we're trying to get <laughs> this has got to be uh one of those things that is a labor of love um i fun. know when speaking to ken every year when he sets up for the ocean state paracon it begins right after the conclusion of one year that start for the very, yes. very next year. Yeah. So the amount of time to put into it, the planning, uh, there's a lot of logistics involved. So it, it has to come from the heart and it has to be done through the head. So yes. God bless you guys both for all the effort that you do for that and for the paranormal field. Well, if we get to the restoring of the buildings are the biggest mm -hmm. priority. I mean, I remember when we first started going out there, like what there was like i think there's been six more buildings that have been restored after we started doing yeah it's really ghost cool when you go out there to very cool and stuff to help them um so you'll see pictures of like when you go around the buildings of what they look like just like five years ago which they were completely demolished and then we have a great artist out there by the name of stefan who uh i don't magically somehow puts these things together back like legos and it's uh, it's amazing this is not stefan brigatti is it What's that? Oh, no, not Stephen. He's amazing. Investor. He's, He's awesome. Nothing. He will actually be there this year as yes, well. Yes, he'll be right. there. Right. I just, I heard Stefan in. Okay. No, Stefan's actually the caretaker of the property, but he's the one that's done all the artwork and not, I call it art because it really is. is what he's doing but he's done it. the all the work on the buildings. Well, um, one of the other things uh, really quickly I wanted to mention is that if you're anywhere in Pennsylvania, Gettysburg. Yes. That's you true. Got yes. Dave Marie there. Let's see. You got the Brady Bunch screen. Uh, third, <laughs> third row down. Uh, fifth little tiny picture over. Jay and Marie Yates. We will August definitely 19th be there. We're excited. We're so honored to be able to go this year. We're closer to it, so we're able to, you know, come and be there at Gettysburg. I, I love Pam and them. I mean, they're amazing. Um, so the berries, I, I just am excited about meeting everybody, seeing everybody. Especially on the East Coast. Um, Have plus, you been? Yeah, I've never. We've never been to Gettysburg. Okay, let me wow. let me just say this. Love it. That town, you wouldn't think it, right? That town is rocking. Oh yeah. At two in the morning, there's still like bars are still open. <laughs> when I was just like, and I'm just where the hell am I? It was like it being in Vegas. I mean, oh well, that's cool. Wow. Oh yeah, no, I mean that that that's pretty. He might want to move there then, because yeah. he hates our towns that we live because everything closes at like eight o'clock. <laughs> Oh, and it's what Sunday today, so everything's definitely closed by like what seven. Yeah. Sure, yeah. If it it has uh, it, it has been an absolute joy having you guys back again. Uh, we wish you the best of of health. We wish yes, you we the do. best of, uh, of of investigating, and um, you know perhaps what we can do is after the event and uh, as we uh, continue on throughout the summertime, love to have you back and talk about all the things that transpired while you guys had this. Absolutely. Uh, this awesome. gathering bring some bring some of your guests with uh with you that night yeah 
There you, you know, go. We'd, love to, we'd love to hear about your experiences. Do a nice little recap. That does it for us, guys. We're all out of time here this evening. I want to thank you again for joining us, and uh, we will be back with you again, if not next week, the following week. It all depends on whether or not Bill is out shooting off fireworks. So <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to hit that subscribe button, also the thumbs up and a reminder bell. Uh, my name is George Lopez. With me, as always, Mr. Ken DeCosta. You guys have a great night. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.